I am a professional ethical hacker. I scan networks and IP addresses for a living. And by the end of the video, you'll understand what this means and how you can use it to scan IP addresses like a hacker does. Before I teach you anything, this video is for educational purposes only. The Battle of Elysia, 52 BC. The Gauls defend their stronghold of Elysia with determination and fiercity during the Gaelic Wars. On the other side, Rome's emperor, Julius Caesar, is leading a massive army. However, Caesar does not just march in. The terrain is rugged, the enemy is unpredictable, and the stakes are incredibly high. Leading a large army without detailed information can lead to costly mistakes, unnecessary losses, and even defeat. Enter the Speculatores. Rome's elite scouts and spies. These specialized soldiers had a crucial role, gathering intelligence, operated behind enemy lines, observing the enemy's movements, mapping out the fortress of Elysia, and identifying weaknesses in their defenses. The speculators found a vulnerable point in the fortified walls of Elysia. Caesar organized his battle plans around the information gathered and capitalized on their weakness. It was a crushing victory. Why is this relevant? To a hacker, enumerating a network or a computer and mapping it out is and always will be step zero. So how do hackers map out computers and networks? They send out their scouts, hundreds and thousands of network packets to report on every single computer, service and port within a network. And the most popular tool to use these days is Nmap. There's other versions, there's other variations, but Nmap has always been the most popular and probably will be. In terms of downloading it, you can get the binary most appropriate for your operating system. You can, if you're on Windows, get the Windows. If you're on Linux, get the Linux binaries. Mac OS, I'm not gonna go over that. Source code, you can always compile it yourself and use it from there. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth as to how to install it because that I feel like has been covered. But once you have been set up with Nmap, there is a whole heap of things you can do to scan IP addresses. The resources on the Nmaps page are also quite good to really get to know the tool and learn the tool. We can go through a distilled version of that demonstration now. Before you can hack an IP address, you need to find an IP address you can hack. So first thing we're going to do is post discovery. This is the simplest command we have seen so far. All it does is it sends out ping scans across the network. And if a computer is up or a device is up, we get a response back and we know it is up. I'm going to do nmap and this is an IP network. What this is, what this command is going to do is it'll go from 10.10.11.0 to 10.10.11.255. All the way in that range. And if a machine is up, we will know. So let's run that. Now, this does usually take a while. So I'm probably going to some editing magic. And when we get the machines back, you'll know. All right. Look at that. Looks like we have some response. This network has six hosts up. There were six machines that responded to us. First one is 10.10.11.24. 4.47.49.213 and .221. Amazing. Now that we have IP addresses that we know are definitely up, it is time to do some port scans. Like I said, now it's time to do a port scan. If a computer has a port up, Nmap can scan it and let us know if it is open or not. Now, what is a port? Well, shops have doors. Front doors are for visitors, back doors are for deliveries. And just like that, computers have numbered doors for different data to enter and leave. Port 80, for example, is for web traffic or HTTP. Port 22 is for SSH servers and so on and so on. What do these commands look like? Well, there is the most basic command. The Nmap default command scans for the top thousand ports. When I say top thousand ports, I mean the most popular thousand ports ah but before we do that i want to show you a way to scan specific ports now we have a dash p flag here and some numbers following the p flag and the ip address what this command does is it scans for specifically those ports now let's do 
22 and 80. Let's scan that IP and see what we get in return. And look at that. Nmap has just let us know that one, the host is up because it just did a ping scan before it ran the port scans. And it checked for port 22 and checked for port 88. And it let us know that we've got an SSH service running on port 22 and a HTTP service running on port 80. But if I want to scan all the ports on a computer, well, there's a command for that as well. Nmap, <laughs> not NAMP, Nmap, dash P dash. What this does is it scans for every single port from zero to 65,500 something, 60 something, 63, I think, on a single computer. And if any of those ports are open, it'll let us know. And now let's run a scan on every single port. Now, as you can see, this is taking a very, very long time. And I want to see the results as it's scanning. So a quick little, a neat little trick that most hackers do at this point is they set the verbosity flag or make this command very verbose, which is dash V, which makes it so that anytime Nmap finds an open port, it lets us know on the message. And look at that. It says scanning has started. We know the port is up and it has discovered some open ports and it'll keep going from zero to 65,535. And at the end, the scan will be complete. And once again, you will know what services are running on there. I'm not going to wait all the way to the end of the scan because it might take ages. What we have next requires a little more in-depth knowledge of network protocols but I will still skim over it. There are different types of scans that you can run. Nmap can discover what ports are open, but it can do it in very different ways. In, in very different ways. In very different ways. First one is the stealth scan or a SYN scan. What this scan does is it sends out SYN packets to all the ports. If there are any open ports, they will respond with an ACK. And that's where the scan stops. It does not complete a TCP connection and it lets us know that the port is currently up. Then there are the following commands where you have the ACK scan, the full TCP scan, where you follow through with the TCP handshakes. And you also have the UDP scan because you don't want to ignore the UDP ports. And of course there are more. If you want to research the types of scans a bit more in depth, you can always just do nmap-h for help. Now, now I know what ports are open on the computer, but I want to know more. It is a hacker's job to know more. And Nmap can once again help me. Let's go into the fingerprinting phase. There are three things I really want to show you. First thing is, once we know what services are running on a port, we would also want to know what version of that service is running. And this can be done through Nmap's fingerprinting techniques. So what I can do here is I'll run an Nmap scan and I know that ports 22 and 80 were open. And what was that machine? Oh, that's not it. Found it. So what I want to do is one, run the scan on ports 22 and 80 and also print out the versions of all the services that are running. And there you go. Let's compare the information to before. If I just do a raw port scan, this is the information that I get. But with the dash SV flag, now I have the open SSH 8.9 P1, P, P1 version. We have what version of HTTP service is running. We know that it is an Apache server. But in, on top of that, I can also figure out what operating system is being used on that server. Let's go dash O, boom. Okay, I just ran it and obviously quit the scan because it required root privileges for an OS scan. So I'll oblige, I'll run that command again as sued, sudo, sued, <laughs> and let nmap do its thing. And look at that. So once again, it has found the ports, but this time it's figured out that the server that is hosting all of these services is using a Linux 5.x. Uh, that's my ambiguity right there. Um, a Linux operating system. It is using a Linux kernel, five point something. The final thing in terms of fingerprinting is um, the do it all command. I call it the do it all command because it just does everything. So I can quickly run, no, no. Just change the flag to dash A. And this should do everything for us. Ah, perfect. 
as you can see, it shows us the versions for the SSH service. It shows us what HTTP server is running, it shows us the OS information. It also shows us a few, um, I think it ran some uh, HTTP scripts. But you know what? This is probably a great segue into the next section, which is Nmap scripting. So now let's utilize Nmap's superpowers. Nmap has a lot of scripts. And these scripts on Linux servers are stored on this location. These are all the scripts Nmap comes with. In addition to just finding out whether a port is up, what service a port is running, there's a lot of automated scans you can do to figure out if the port is running a vulnerable service, find out more information on the service itself. Nmap does this in an automated fashion. You can run default scripts command. Dash SC, very similar to dash SV, runs all default scripts against the ports that have been identified to be open. So let's run an, our Nmap scan again. And this time I will do SC and we'll add our ports 22 and 80 one more time and see what we get. You can see that the scripts have returned a fair bit of information for us. For the SSH server, Nmap found some host keys. For the HTTP server, Nmap found some quick, helpful information around the HTTP title the generator or the engine I'm guessing that is being used on the HTTP server. It's found a robot.txt file with some entries and we can confirm that by going to the website. Boom. And look at that. It's found some secret paths on the server. Hmm, ghost. And already we're looking at an admin portal. That is quite nice. A second method of running the same script is default scripts command. So this command just has dash dash script equals default. It's the same thing as having dash SC, but here we can be a bit more granular and I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to the third command. The vulnerability scripts will look for open or previously known vulnerabilities for the versions or softwares that are running script equals to vuln. We'll run that now instead of the dash sc, which was default. This time we'll only do uh, vulnerability scanning. Ah, looks like it's come back with a fair bit of information. So it has clearly looked for some vulnerabilities on the servers. And I don't think it actually actively tries to execute those vulnerabilities. So this is safe to run. Well, not safe, but you know. And on the HTTP server, it has tried to find some CSRF vulnerabilities, some cross-site scripting, um, some DOM-based cross-site scripting. Now we noticed that it discovered some uh, directories. So if I want to run specifically just that script, I have that option by the way. So let's do the next command, which runs only the HTTP enum command. So I'll copy that, copy that, run it. And this should be fairly quick. If not, I will be disappointed. And once again, it found the RSS subdirectory and the robots. But if I want to run multiple commands, I can specify them just like that. I'm not going to run it again. It takes too long, but that's how you use scripts. With Nmap scripts, you can run automated scans and automated scripts to find vulnerabilities, try and exploit them um, based on the services that are active and running on the server. As you've noticed, some of these scans are very, very, very slow. So what I like to do in these situations is uh, run some extremely fast scans. Now they're not very stealthy, but you know what? Speed over stealth. So what I usually do is I specify timing flags and T1 is the slowest, T4 is the fastest. Now I'll run the previous command again, but this time I'll put a dash T4 on it. See if it, see if that changes the speed at all. All right, all right, all right, whatever. I'm not gonna wait here. And the next thing you can do is you can run a scan only on the top ports. Now top ports aren't the first first ports, first X number of ports. It's not, when you say top ports 100, it runs a scan, a port scan, to check for the top 100 most popular ports 
that I found to be open. These are usually a lot faster than your regular scans. We'll, we'll do that again. 10.10.11.47. Since this time I'm only scanning 100 ports, it shouldn't take too long. And 22 and 80 should definitely be um, in the top 100. And, you know, in addition to that, I'll add the T4 in there because I think T3 is the default. But if I do T4 and look at that, you can see that the time taken for the scans was much faster. Um, I, have, I saved a whole second. I can brush my teeth longer now. Now, congratulations on making it this far. We are almost at the end. The final thing I want to go through is output. Nmap commands are time intensive. We know that. So every morning when I want to start hacking again, if it's the same computer or I don't want to run Nmap again and again and again, what I would rather do is store all of the information that I found in an output file. The way to do that is through the output flags. Dash ON stores all the output in clear text. Um, let's go to the previous fast command and uh, specify the ON flag. We'll do Zarek ON and we'll do um, top port scan. Oh, can't type .txt. This should take a second or so. I can see a top port scan .txt file in my current directory. And if I print it out, it is essentially the exact same information we found here, with minus some um, logistics slash metrics. Now that is all good. It's um, a text file, but obviously that can be hard to um, parse. So I'd have to write my own custom parser. So if I want to automate scripts on top of this, what I can do is I can run or store this output in an XML file. Now XML files, uh, or data structures are really good to store information in a structured way so I can extract that information very quickly, extract ports very quickly, extract services very quickly, and we'll see what that looks like. So we'll go back. I'll change the file output to XML, ON to OX, and we'll see what that looks like. Now I can just use an XML parser or a Python script to go through all of these fields. Here we go. I can extract that information a lot easier now. Sometimes I want not just the text file, but also the XML file and any other format possible. So there's the screw it command, which captures essentially all outputs. It's the dash OA. Let's run that again. And this time what I'm going to get is a list of three files. Screw it. I'm going to get a list of three files with three different extensions and three different formatting. Look at that, screw it. Screw it. I've got three different files. And that is it. That is it for storing and um, having your nmaps piped to an output. Now, it is time to visit the final command again. All of these flags you should know with the exception of one flag. I want you to identify what that flag is, what that does, how it's useful, and uh, have fun hacking. Oh, damn it.